welcome back. In this tutorial we will work on making the paddle more responsive. We'll start working on the ball also, we'll add a physics material to it and try to get the sort of uh, physics interactions with the ball that we want. We will also set constraints on the paddle and the ball to prevent any unwanted movement as a result of physics interactions. So, if we return uh, and press play. Now I've pressed W, I'm no longer pressing it. I'm pressing it now, I'm no longer pressing it. That's way, t it's way too much momentum. So the way that we can deal with that is we need to find some sort of balance here between mass and linear drag. Linear drag will increase the resistance to movement. Um, angular drag will increase the resistance to rotation. So we want to increase the linear drag. Now I've already experimented with this and I think one linear drag with a mass of uh, 0.1 works pretty well. So you can see now it's it's a lot more responsive. There's still a little momentum which I'm going to leave in because it makes the game a little more exciting because you it's, it's just not as predictable. You have to allow for any sort of um, the momentum as well when you're, when you're trying to figure out where to put the paddle. So I'll leave that in. Now you might might have noticed this here. The paddle has moved slightly from its collision with the top boundary. Its rotation has gone a little off. So we'll deal with that now. Okay. So to do that, we need to look at the constraints. We have the option to freeze the position on the x-axis. We have the option to freeze the position on the y-axis, and we have the op option to freeze the rotation. Now we we will want to allow movement on the y-axis. X-axis, we don't want that. We also don't want it to be able to rotate. This is the paddle. So let's just freeze the x position and freeze the rotation. Okay, so let's check to see if that's fixed the problem. So there you go, it's no longer it's no longer rotating when it hits the boundary. So that's that taken care of. Let's just make the changes now to the other paddle. freeze position and freeze rotation. So the next thing we need to look at is uh, getting the ball to react. Uh, basically we do not want the ball to lose momentum. So if we just take a quick look at this now, let's just set the gravity to 1. You see that it immediately loses all, all momentum when it hits a surface. So to, to fix this we need to create a physics material that will recreate um, effectively a, a, a rubber ball or a ball that will not lose momentum when it strikes a surface. So to do that let's just go into assets here. We create a new physics 2D material. Uh, ball material. I'll call it ball P material. Okay, so you can see that there are options up here uh, for changing the friction and bounciness. So let's set the friction to zero and the bounciness to one. Now this this should this, this should set up the, the requirements of what we need. We, let's have a look here. No, it didn't because I didn't apply it to the ball. So um, let's do that now. So we've got the ball physics material here, and we need to add it here. And let's see what happens now. There we go. So it's it is also affected by gravity. So it's probably actually going to gain height over time. Um, but it won't be affected by gravity in the game. So let's just set the gravity scale to zero. Now we also need to look at the ball, the constraints. The ball will want to move free movement on the x and y axis. I'm not sure if there will be any, I think we could just freeze the rotation, though I'm not sure if it will make much difference. Um, but that more or less concludes that tutorial now. We paddles are working better. The ball is now uh, acting as we want it to. 
and we've set the constraints so the pieces will no longer get knocked out of place by physics interactions. I'll see you in the next video.